Hello everybody. Yes, I know I didn't shave, but this is free, so I don't have to shave. You know, take it or leave it. This is me scrubby. What do you think? Whatever. I don't really care. World Series time. Time to grind, y'all. I'm gonna get right into this one, because this one's all poker. We're talking poker, 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 and some more poker. Scoop just wrapped up, and Sean Deeb did one of these to him. Four wins. That's pretty damn good. Pretty, 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 pretty good, right? Isildur, not so bad. He won two of his own. He won a little bit of money, 400 some thousand dollars. So those guys looking prime for the World Series of Poker, which is exactly what I want to talk about right now. WPT Championship didn't go well for me. I'll tell you about a key hand later. But more importantly, I told you last week that I'm going to have a fun little competition for a lot of you guys uh, for free, okay? At fullcontactpoker.com. Click on fullcontactpoker.com slash WSOP12. You will find a basically a World Series Poker fantasy pool where first prize is going to be 1% of whatever I cash for. So figure that out. If I cash for a million, that's $10,000 for you guys. Why am I doing that? I have no idea because I'm just a nice guy, I guess. I, I really don't know. I just thought it's fun to do and, you know, I don't know. It's like I can afford it, I guess, and it's fun. And I'm also giving more prizes away. Second through fifth, iPad 3. Why not? Throw it in there. Uh, sixth through tenth, we're going to throw a six-month membership to Poker VT. Speaking of Poker VT, they're also doing a promotion. Everybody's just giving shit away. They're going to give away a seat. Um, check out the link below for the Poker VT uh, promotion. They're giving away like a $1,000 seat plus a little bit of spending cash and whatnot. Uh, and they're doing some tournaments on PokerStars.com. Ever heard of it? So yeah, lots of good deals for you out there, all for free. More prizes, 11th through 20th, I'm going to throw you a book. I'll sign it for you if you want me to. Power Hold'em Strategy by Daniel Negreanu, among others. 20 prizes, really easy pool to figure out. There's going to be 15 categories of five players. You pick the guy in the category you think is going to have the best World Series. I threw my picks together, and I'm going to share them with you with a little bit of reason as to why I took them. The first group is a toughie. You got Phil Ivey, myself, who plans to be baller this year at the World Series of Poker. No distractions. Time to kick some butt. Eugene Kachilov, Bertrand, Grospelier, Elke, whatever you want to call him. Uh, and then you got Eugene, well, I said Eugene Kachilov, right? There's five of them. You can see him right there. In this category, I picked none other than Phil Ivey. <laughs> I really did. I picked Phil Ivey. Bottom line is this. Phil Ivey, until otherwise determined, is the best poker player in the world. It seems like he's going to play more events this year. I mean, if I do well, I'm going to be happy anyway, right? So whatever. Why do I want to pick myself? That's, you know, I'll leave that to those people. In the second group, we call it the Dan Dan group. We got Dan Smith, Dan Kelly, Daniel Cates, Dan O'Brien, and Daniel Alai. Pretty damn tough group, right? Uh, I think I'm going to go with Dan Kelly in this one. The kid's really been coming on strong the last couple years. And what I like about him is that he's not a one-trick pony. You know, he can play all the games. He plays... The mixed game's pretty well. He plays Pot Limit Omaha, Hold'em, and he's always there, and he seems to grind pretty hard. So uh, a lot of tough players in that group, but I'm going to go with Dan Kelly. In group three, we have the ladies, Vanessa Selves, Vanessa Russo, Maria Ho, Liv Marie, and Jennifer Harmon. Another tough group. You remember the weekly rant I did about the ladies, so I thought I'd throw them all together. But, you know, now this is going to be the hard part because I said a lot of nice things about all of them, right? But who would I go with in a spot like this? I got to say, man, since she's on a tear, she's been on a tear. I'm going to get, whatever. I'm just going to go, you know, I'm going to go safe here because I think a lot of people are going to go with Vanessa Selps. So I'm going to go ahead and go with Vanessa Selps because I think she's going to grind a lot of tournaments. She's also been learning how to play mixed games too from some pretty tough players. So I expect Vanessa to maybe get a bracelet or two. In group four, we got just a potpourri of people. Scott Seaver, Sean Deeb, who just crushed online. Slightly different. We got Sorrell Mizzy, Jonathan Duhamel, who's been en fuego, and Bryn Kenny. I'm going to go off. I'm going to go on a flyer here. You know, the popular pick is Jonathan Duhamel and, uh, of course, Sean Deeb because he had that, you know, big rush online. But I'm going to go with, like, a dark horse here, and I'm going to go with Bryn Kenny. Uh, I think he's going to play a lot of events, and uh, he seems to always get there in these World Series of Poker. He's always down to two, three tables. If he has a breakthrough, he could really, like, crush. And, I, I mean, I got a lot of respect for the guy's game. Not that I don't for everyone else. Really tough group to pick from. Group five, more potpourri. Isaac Haxton, Justin Bonomo. Doc Sands, Chris Mormon, Tom Marchese, killer group, right? I mean, all really, really good players. Uh, most of these guys are all no-limit guys. I mean, there's no one here who really kind of fits outside that box. Uh, I'm going to go with a guy who I feel has uh, underperformed this year and ever since he won Player of the Year, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it the comeback year for Mr. Big Cheese, Tom Marchese. Group six is our old-school group. We got Huck Seed, Phil Helmuth, Barry Greenstein, John Juwanda, and Eric Seidel. I am going to go with another guy who just seems to always cash the World Series, you haven't heard a lot about him recently. Uh, he was at the World Poker Tour Championship. I think he's going to play a decent amount of events. Going with John Juwanda. Group 7. We're going with the Germans. Kanek bitte haben. Yeah! We got Marvin Rettmeyer, Tobias Rankemeyer, Pius Heinz, Dominic... 
Dominic Nish. <laughs> We're going with Dominic. And a uh, guy named Benny Spindler. Another tough PLO mixed game player. Very, very tough group to pick from. The last six months or so, I've played a lot with this kid. I uh, feel like he's always there, solid. Gives me a, He's a pain in my neck. So I'm going to go with Tobias Rankemeyer to come out on top in that group. In group eight, we've got cash game specialists. A lot of guys who don't play a lot of World Series of Poker events. We've got Tom Dwan, Gus Hansen, Patrick Antonius, Doyle Brunson, and Johnny Chan. A lot of bracelets in there with Doyle and Johnny. That's 20 alone. Uh, Tom Dwan yet to get his first. Neither is Gus or Patrick. Oh, wait, never mind. Gus won one of the World Series Europe. Sorry. I think... Based on motivation here, this is really a tough group to pick from because this is a very small sample size. I'm guessing that I think Durr is going to play the most events, so I'm going to go with Tom Dwan in that group. We're going English with this next group. We got Sam Trickett, James Dempsey, Jay Cody, James Aikenhead, and J.P. Kelly. Ah, this was a tough one. I really just kind of flipped the coin here. Um, this kid, Jay Cody, has got a lot of like fire in him. I feel like he's going to play a lot of events. All these other guys have had you know a modicum of success. Um, man, I don't know. It was him or J.P. Kelly. I was flipping a coin. I'm going with Jay Cody. Group number 10, well, you figure out a name for this. We got Praz Banzi, Faraz Jaka, Ram Baswani, Vivek Rajkumar, and Hassan Habib. Isn't that right? In this group, we got a lot of guys who do a lot of different things. I went with Jaka Jaka, Faraz Jaka. I feel like he's uh, primed and ready to have a pretty big World Series. The thing with him, he's just a No Limit Hold'em guy, but I think he's going to play a lot of those events. And those those smaller events, people, he just owns people, man. He just slaps them around like nothing with his four bet and five bet and craziness. So I'm going Jaka, Jaka, Jaka. And then we have uh, another group randomly put together. Uh, Scotty Wynn, Joseph Chung, David Shu, Nam Lee, JC Tran. No connection, just random potpourri. In this group, I'm going to go with the mixed game guy. The guy who grinds hard every year. A little bit of an old school guy. Uh, I know he always plays a lot of events. And he's always a good horse in the World Series of Poker. David Shu. Group 12... We're going Nordic. We got Victor Blom, first World Series of Poker ever. Chris Bjorn, Juha Helpi, Annette Oberstad, and Willy Walbeck. Very, very tough group to pick from. Uh, a lot of these guys uh, could have really big series. Chris Bjorn's always there every year. I'm going I'm going again on a flyer. If this guy plays, he's a mixed game guy, does really well. He's ha He had a really good run a couple years ago. I'm going Willy Walbeck. Oh, Canada. We're going Canada. I'm not in this group, neither is Jonathan, but we wanted to throw them together. We got Gavin Smith. Mike Timex McDonald, Sean Buchanan, Michael Mad Dog Watson, and Eric Cagillet. Don't raise me. I'm going to move all in on you. <laughs> he's got like a real frog in his throat. I hope he's not watching this because he's big and scary. In this group, I, I'm going to go with the guy who's been consistent the last couple years, uh, Buck21. He's playing all the games. He doesn't. He's not just a hold'em one-trick pony. I think most of the other guys outside of Gavin pretty much just play hold'em. I think the best bet here is Sean Buchanan. Group 14, you can call him the... Bust out slash big mouth group. I don't know. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a group of people that you're like, oh, you, you have an opinion on these guys one really. You either love them or you hate them. You got Mike Matisseau, Jean Robert Ballon. You've got David Chino Ream. What's up, Chino? How you doing? You know. We got Matt A D Z one two what one two something Mefriati, who's supposed to play a lot of events, I would think. And then last but not least, a man with some hot. And some fire in his belly. Tony, the G-Man. We're going with Tony G and we're throwing him in that group. I don't know if he's going to play a lot. Yeah, none of these guys have really like sort of taken the World Series by storm in the last few years. I'm going to bet on a guy who he's got a lot to prove. He always does. And I think this might be the year that he does. I'm going to go with another Canadian, Matt Murfiati. And last but not least, we're going with the Poker VT crew. We got Brian Rast, newly married in Brazil, hottie. Jason Somerville, always baller at the World Series of Poker. Adam Junglin, two-fifths last year. John Pearl Jammer Turner plays all the games. And, of course, Devo, Brian Devonshire. Of this group, I'm going with the guy that I think has the best chance in the small field events. And I've played with him in the mixed games. He knows what he's doing. Good, smart, young kid. I'm going with Pearl Jammer, John Turner. Tough pick here, but I'm going with Turner. Okay, enough with the low roller fantasy stuff. We're back up with the high rolling ballers. Friday, nope. Sorry, I screwed this up in my tweets so many times. Saturday. May, not April, Saturday, May 26, 2012, at about 7 p.m. at the Aria, we are going to hold the $25,000 buy-in World Series of Poker fantasy draft auction style. I want to thank the Aria because they've been, they really are, in terms of like in this city, in this town, they're the most player friendly. When it comes to stuff like this, you make a phone call, you know, they hook you up. So, and it's a really good facility. Good news is also, uh, the event will be covered. The scoring will be done, I believe, by Bluff. They're going to keep it updated. They're going to talk about the event every once in a while. And check this out. There's going to be a live stream. The dudes at Quad Jacks, Agent Marco, and the rest of them, they are going to show up. And they've got really cool graphics they're going to put up 
uh, of the players, their stats, as well as, you know, how much they went for the year before. So they're going to cover the whole thing. Should be a lot of fun. There's always beers flowing, a lot of trash talk in the room. For all the rules and the results from last year, check the links below. So I know I didn't give you a DJing story of the week last week, and I'm going to change the name of that whole thing to the DJing story of when I feel like telling you one, because I'm not giving you one again this week. So don't hate, yo. This is free. Remember? Free. What I would like to do is share a poker hand with you from the World Poker Tour Championship that I played early on. What? It's a very unique tournament. You start with 500 big blinds. That's just a ton, you know? It's hard to go broke very early on. You have to have something really crazy happen, like set over set, something like that. Or, or maybe not. Here's the hand. Jotty backs. Tight, solid player, knows what he's doing. Raises to 500. Blinds are one and two. The button calls 500. I look down, pair of jacks. Now, this is not really a good spot to re-raise when you're that deep. I mean, you can. You're just bloating the pot. Good players behind you. They're just going to, like, outplay you unless you flop a jack. I mean, what are you hoping to come? They're going to call. Two guys call you. Comes 765. You're probably going to get bluffed out or beat. Comes a king, queen, or an ace. You're just no man's land. Just totally <laughs> handcuffed. Out of position. I don't recommend raising with that hand too often. So, anyway. Big blind calls two. We got four of us. I did two. I had to finger two. Four of us. Okay. Flop comes. Ace. Jack. Eight. Jack eight or diamonds. Pretty good flop for me. Thinking, sweet. I check. Big blind leads 1,300. Thinking, ooh, yummy. Maybe he's got a set of eights. Johnny backs flats that now. So I figure Johnny's got an ace. No big deal. I can handle that. Ace, king, big deal. Now the button makes it 5,000. I'm thinking, okay. Sweet. He's got the pocket eights. I'm ready to dance with that guy. I'm ready to dance with the guy in the big blind. I'm ready to get it in because I figure there's no way either of them have aces like ever. So I decide to pop it up to 14,000 and make the draws pay because it is a very draw heavy board. Big blind folds. Now out of the blue, Johnny backs. Just boom. Pile drives 40,000 into the pot. Other guy folds. What would you do? Seriously, it's not exactly an easy spot. Um, but after you think about it a little bit, it is pretty easy because what the heck is Johnny Backs going to do that with? Uh, if he had pocket eights, he might be worried a little bit, you know, that I've got pocket jacks. It's well within my range. Um, he could have a, a combo draw, right? But why would he just call on that spot, you know, if he had 9, 10 of diamonds or something like that? He could have ace, king of diamonds possibly, but based on my read, I just don't think he's crazy to do that. And when he bet it, like there was obviously, I don't, I don't think he cared at that point. He was just happy to pick up the pot. So he kind of gave off the fact that like, yo, man, I ain't bluffing. Um, so I thought about it for a really long time, and I decided, okay, if I fold here, I still got over 400 big blinds. Do I, do I wanna, really want to risk it on what's essentially a coin flip? Because you've got like three aces or three eights. Uh, yeah, there's some equity in there, but I still got plenty of chips. What did screw me up, though, is what the heck did this guy have, and what did that guy have? I'm thinking to myself, I'm trying to get a read on them. I'm like, did he have an ace? Did you have an ace? Hey, did you have an ace? Did you, did you have an ace? Seriously, come on, give me the look. I need to know if one of you guys had an ace. If you both had an ace, I'm all in. No, nothing? Got nothing from either, so... I didn't know. I decided to fold the hand. Johnny decided to show me one ace, which is plenty. He showed me the ace of diamonds or semi-needle. Later, he tweeted that he had three aces. Based on the conversation later, I don't see any reason why he'd be lying. And if he was, whatever. You know, good luck to him. I'm still going to fold that hand in that spot every time because it's just not a good spot to get your money in that early in the tournament. So first time in my life I've ever folded middle set on the flop. It felt like pretty easy fold. So no ballerina flat talk this week, no survivor, no nothing like that. It's all poker, 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 and it's perfect timing because the World Series of Poker is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. It is here. Uh, there is 100K that happens before that, which happens tomorrow, and you know how I do in those 100Ks. That's my bag. And I'm planning on playing, but I'm not 100% sure, and I mean that. Like, I'm going to show up a little late. I got something else to do, and it's really embarrassing what I got to do. It's like, well, whatever. I'm getting, I'm getting, um, I'm getting zapped, you know, like laser, hair laser removal. Right on the back of my neck. Not on my face, because that would be see right here. Ooh, that's actually burnt. Yeah, I don't know. It's I've been doing it for two years, and it's like, why stop now? I've already had nine. I just said I'm not going to talk ballerina flats or anything like that. And look, I just can't help myself, right? Okay. You know what? Enough. Before I get really goofy and stupid, I'm going to let you guys go. Um, I'm going to edit this thing real quick, and then i got to go get zapped in the morning, like I said, and uh, try to play the 100K. And what else I got going on? Oh, yeah. We got the draft. Saturday, 7 p.m., show up on time, or you might lose the player that you want. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, that's it for now. All right? Peace.